Hi, we'll talk about the last process skill, which is apply constraints. And this is definitely not the least important. In fact, it is very important process skill. Now to exemplify the importance of this process skill, I want you to first solve this 700 level question from the official guide. Pause the video, solve the question and resume when you're ready. Good luck. All right, we're gonna solve this question using our step-by-step -step method. How many integers to find out the number of integers that satisfy this inequality are less than five. So we really need to figure out the number of integers x such that x is less than five and it satisfies the, the those values of x satisfy this inequality. Okay. Now observe this inequality and what you can tell is it seems to be in a factorized form, but it's not in our typical familiar uh, quadratic inequalities or linear inequalities. So we absolutely need to simplify. Okay, that's something which we absolutely need to simplification is absolutely required. So let's let's do that. Okay, um, so that's the first thing. Okay, now let's just write that down. That's the first thing that we figured out that we need to simplify it. Now the second thing for what we're going to do is we're going to now simplify it. Okay. Now x minus 2 is in the denominator, right? Now this is an inequality, right? So if you, you know that conceptual knowledge um, tells you that if you multiply both sides of the inequality by a positive number, then the sign of the inequality does not change. But if you multiply both sides by a negative number, then the sign of the inequality changes, right? When you multiply both sides by a negative number. Now, do we know what is the positive or the negative nature of x minus 2? No, x minus 2 can be x minus 2 can be negative, it can be positive, okay, right, so we don't really know, which means that we cannot, we absolutely cannot multiply both sides by x minus 2, that's something that we cannot do, okay, so how do we simplify this, the next best thing that we can do is, we can actually, or, or the, the right thing that we need to do over here is, multiply both sides by x minus 2 whole square, that will get rid of the denominator over here. And why can we multiply both sides by x minus 2 whole square? Because this is a non-negative number. Square is always a non-negative number, right? All right, so we're going to do that now. So when we do that, what do we get? We get, okay, we are multiplying both sides by, okay, we get x, sorry, x minus 2 whole square times x plus 2 times plus 3 divided by x minus 2 or x minus 2 okay now this will get a cancelled out so what we get is x minus 2 into x plus 2 into x plus 3 is greater than or equal to 0 that's what you get now now you're going to apply your typical method to solve such an inequality that's already in factorized form and uh, what you do over here is uh, i'm using a very basic conceptual method you can utilize um, wavy line method or whichever method you're comfortable with but i'm going to utilize a very basic conceptual method in which we basically figure out the roots the roots are two minus two and three and then i plot it on the number line Zero, 0 is not a root. This is, I get 2 here, minus 2, and I have minus 3. Sorry, there's minus 3 here. Okay. Now, the possible ranges that I have now are d. This is a possible range. Then I have this as a possible range. Then I have minus 2 to 2 as a possible range. Then greater than 2 as a possible range. These are my possible ranges for the values of x. So now I need to figure out in which range, in which of, in which ranges is the inequality, does the inequality hold true or in which range is the product greater than or equal to zero. That's what I need to figure out. Okay. Now to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to simply Again, I'm following a very basic method. As I said, you can utilize their multiple methods available. So multiple methods to do the processing. Multiple methods for processing. Okay. And in fact, if you want to learn about the wavy line method, I'm going to link up an article for that as well. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to write down the range. I'm going to create a little table 
and I'm just going to start this off and I would want you to finish it up as well. So I'm going to take up the range, I'm going to take up a sample value, I'm going to take up what individual terms look like and what does the product look like. So let's start off with our range A which is x greater than 2 and right now I'm just considering greater than uh, uh, a 2 sign, okay, or gr greater than sign over here or not the equal to, we'll deal with that later. Let's take up a sample value as 3. Now the individual terms here, so this is, this. these are the terms that we are concerned with over here. So 3 minus 2, okay, then 3 plus 2, 3 plus 3, okay. Now this is a positive number, that's a positive number, that's a positive number, which means the product will be positive, okay. Let's take up another example here. Let's take up our range as, let's take a number here as 0 in the range 2. Sample value 0, let's see, this is what uh, 0 minus 2, 0 plus 2, 0 plus 3. So what we end up getting is minus, plus, plus, which means that the product is negative. And again, I'm not going to work out each of these essentially from your conceptual knowledge and I'm just going to write down your conceptual knowledge because again for those of you who are not able to follow this along, uh, you need to work on your conceptual understanding with regards to how to solve equations such uh, inequalities such as this one okay so based on your conceptual knowledge if this is positive this will be negative this will be positive and this will be negative okay now which means that i'm going to write down five over here the ranges that are applicable for us the ranges that meet this inequality are ranges a and c because in a and c this inequality is positive that's what we are looking for right now what is range a now, if you think about it, our ranges, our, our inequality is greater than or equal to zero, okay? In these ranges, we didn't consider the equal to sign, right? So now let's bring back the equal to sign, which means that the range possible, is the, the, the correct range over here is x greater than or equal to 2 and 3, minus 3 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to minus 2. These are the two ranges which are applicable. This is your A and this is your C, okay? But I want you to focus on one very important thing. x minus 2 is in the denominator, okay, which means that x cannot be, x cannot be equal to 2. This is a very, very important constraint, a conceptual constraint that is imposed by the information that's given to you in the question statement. What is the information? That x minus 2 is in the denominator, okay. That's the conceptual constraint. So when you apply that conceptual constraint over here, that x is not equal to 2, what you end up getting is that x is greater than 2 as the range. Now over here we are okay. We are still okay with minus 3 less than or equal to minus 2. Okay. Now here we are at the last step. You take this information. What you what we needed was another con another constraint that is imposed by the question statement is that is that your integral values should be less than 5. Okay. So now overall constraints that we have is x is less than 5 x is not equal to 2 and the ranges that we have are x is greater than 2 and minus 3 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to minus 2. Now these three lead us to possible values of x as minus 3, minus 2, 3 and 4 which means that total number of values are 4. So here are our answer choices. Okay, D is the correct answer. But I want you to notice one thing. Had you not applied this constraint over here, that x has to be greater than 2, or had you not applied the constraint that x is not equal to 2, then you would have incorrectly selected choice E as the correct answer. Okay, And that, you wouldn't have gotten this question wrong for any of your conceptual gaps. You would have gotten this question wrong purely because you failed to apply this process skill of apply constraints okay so again very 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 critical to gain that mastery of process skills now as you saw in this question failure to identify constraints that are imposed on the variables in the question can definitely lead you to mark the incorrect answer so you should consciously be looking for constraints that have been imposed on the variables in the question and these constraints can be either explicitly stated in the question statement or they can be conceptual in nature as well. So start building your ability to apply this process skill. Good luck.